Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So, we're still recovering from the Bitcoin dip. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, today there's more people that's trying to explain what happened and trying to look at all the metrics and stuff like that. And we'll show you. But I think more importantly, what should you do about it? We had this Bitcoin dip. Yes, right? What should you do about it? I think it's best to go bargain hunting. There's a lot of altcoins, a lot of projects that have dipped with Bitcoin. And this is the best time to be picking up. So today, let's look at some of the ones that have dropped off the most within the last 24 hours, within the last week, and determine which projects are bargains and which ones we should pick up. So let's get started. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Two streams almost every day, 11.30 and 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and check out all the latest news, articles, and guides on CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. I can feel the excitement. You know, the market is pumping up because of my stream, because that's the effect I have on the market. Um, <laughs> you can see Bitcoin is, uh, you know, roughly where it was yesterday, 46.4. You know, this last night, it, it, it did drop down to about 44, came right back up. And now I drew another line here. Uh, you can see this 46.1. This is like a temporary low, I guess, right? Temporary resistance support slash whatever. And it's, it's something here. So Bitcoin, of course, fell down and we had this kind of like this flash drop, liquidated a ton of people and people. And there's a lot of analysts out there that are still trying to explain it. Like what happened? You know, Willy Wu was on top of it. You know, uh, he tweeted this saying, you know, Bitcoin flashes are caused by deleveraging, but it just doesn't make any sense because if you compare what happened yesterday with, say, the COVID crash, you could see that exchange flow, short-term investors, long-term investors with price all fell down in tandem. Yesterday, it was just price. Exchange flows, short-term investors, long-term investors in terms of, you know, supply shock, um, they didn't go down. So only one thing out of the four went down. So it was kind of a mystery, right? And then, uh, you know, other people were looking at it too. Uh, what, here, Will, you know, Will has some good metrics. He was saying the same thing. You look at all the supply shock out there, which is basically measuring the amount of supply out there, the number of holders, and it, it just hasn't moved. So who actually sold? Well, according to this article, it's not the holders, it's not retail investors, it's not anyone in particular, other than the whales. The whales did it, okay? Whales do whalish things. That's what they do. They found the right opportunity, they decided to dump, and guess what? They liquidated a whole bunch, a whole bunch of long investors, okay? Leveraged long investors is a long, long, long squeeze. 3.2 billion and then 420 million you add those two up you know over three and a half billion of longs liquidated so that's exactly what happened now i theorized maybe the whales are also known as uh, imf <laughs> because the imf is not happy about el salvador adopting bitcoin's legal tender maybe they had something to do with this. I created a couple videos about that already. If you haven't watched it, make sure you do so. You know, there's a history of El Salvador, I mean, a history of IMF um, discrediting or trying to discredit Bitcoin and, and trying to just put a negative light on it ever since Bitcoin surpassed their SDR reserves and continues to surpass it, continues to go up, and they feel threatened. So who knows? Is it IMF? Is it the whales? Is it a combination of both? We know it happened, right? So enough about that. Now that it has happened, what should you do about it, right? Well, in my opinion, the best thing to do is take advantage. So you can take advantage multiple ways. You could, first of all, stock up and stack more sats and buy more Bitcoin. Because I think at this point, we all know Bitcoin is going to go a lot higher. When you have countries adopting Bitcoin now, that changes the game. That changes the game. No matter what, Anyone says we never had countries adopt Bitcoin before. 
adopt a digital currency to be legal tender. That has never happened ever in the history of mankind. And it just happened yesterday, even though the whales or an IMF tried to, uh, you know, downplay the occasion. It is a monumental occasion, so don't let anyone fool you. And you know what? Standard Charter, Standard Charter, who came out to the big, uh, big bank, came out the report and they've become really, really bullish on Bitcoin as well. Okay. Uh, they actually, I actually kind of cover half of this yesterday, but they did say that they anticipate Ethereum will go as high as 26 or 35,000, right? Which is 10 X its price right now. They anticipate that will happen, but they also anticipate that Bitcoin will hit 100,000 late 2021 or early 2022. So even they believe that Bitcoin is going higher, and that's because every bank is believing the same thing now. Every bank, every bank out there, every major bank is now somehow invested in Bitcoin through mining companies, through Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, through holding Bitcoin directly in their funds, or offering some kind of custodian service. Every single bank is getting involved, and that's because they know they have to, okay? Bitcoin is the future. You can't ignore it. And now many have become very, very, very bullish on it too. Standard Charter, Citibank, before their, one of their analysts came out and said Bitcoin will hit $400,000. And others, like JP Morgan's wealth management, um, have said similar things. So, Bitcoin is definitely going to continue. We are still in this bull run. Don't let yesterday's event scare you out of life-changing wealth. Okay? All right. Now, what else is there? Um, you know, of course, I talked about Salvador. Uh, Charles Hoskinson uh, believes what I believe, which is... There's going to be many, many, many countries that follow El Salvador's footsteps, right? And it's the first of many. It's a monumental occasion. And there's just going to be a lot more. A lot more countries that's going to follow. That's either go make crypto the part of their monetary policy or as reserves in their central bank. We haven't really seen that yet. Imagine, you know, all the countries that have so, so many tons of gold in their reserves. Imagine when they replace all that with a USB stick and they hold billions to trillions of Bitcoin instead. You don't need you don't need warehouses or wherever to store billions of dollars worth of gold. You just need you just need a safe deposit box to, to store your your uh, ledger or treasure, right? Imagine when that day comes when all the countries out there are fighting over the very very few bitcoins that's in existence and when that happens man bitcoin is going to be i don't know where it's gonna be a million dollars ten million dollars wherever it may be right it's gonna be a lot higher so um oh and look at this ukraine also legalized bitcoin and crypto interesting it's starting to happen yesterday i covered panama paraguay they're all looking at the same thing so yes this is definitely happening this is definitely happening um what else is there well there's there's some fun there's some fun obviously uh we know the imf right but coinbase also came out and said that sec may be going after them if they launch their lend product basically uh sec is going after you know any 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 project or any company i should say that is into giving yields and that's what the Lend product is. You know, we've heard of BlockFi doing. They're kind of in trouble with some states. But also, um, SEC is going after Uniswap because they feel like Uniswap and their yield pools and all those tokens that SEC thinks everything is a security. Uh, they're going after them. And guess what? Uniswap is also invested by Coinbase. So is this a coincidence? Probably not. So now Coinbase and Brian Armstrong said that the SEC sent them a stern warning. If they come out with their own Lend product, which will offer yield on, on coins, uh, they will be sued by the SEC. You know, out of all the companies, every all the scam and Ponzi's and, and meme products out there, you know, I don't know why the SEC is going after the legit ones, right? So, I don't know. Um, you know, a lot of people anticipated that 
that Gary Gunsler was going to be positive for crypto, going to be a great chairman of the SEC. Well, uh, looking like that may not be the case. He's going gung-ho and then attacking everyone, declaring everything as a security. <laughs> so I don't know if this is going to be uh, a good thing. But anyways, we'll see. Coinbase, I'm sure they have plenty of lawyers. They will fight the SEC. So this is actually the reason why I actually I am rooting for XRP now. Because, of course, XRP is being sued by the SEC. I actually am rooting for XRP because I want them to win. Because if the SEC wins the lawsuit against XRP and basically just deems that anything is a security, well, that's going to be a problem for all future pro uh, you know, projects they go after. So I'm actually really hoping that XRP wins. Right then, all these other projects that SC goes after will have something to reference to and say, "Hey, you know what? We're not a security." So we'll see. We'll see. So there's some fun out there today. Uh, what else is there? Well, Vitalik, uh, Vitalik came out with uh, with a paper, research paper that uh, that says that you know the industry should move NFTs into layer two because that would be uh, that would reduce fees and congestion, which we you know is, is crazy right now. It's really crazy on Ethereum. And that's because people are going uh, crazy over NFTs and DeFi. Let's not forget DeFi is nearing 100 billion total value locked in. And NFTs continue to do very, 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 very well, right? So, of course, Vitalik would say, hey, let's just move everything to layer two. But it's not as easy uh, as that. Although... You know, this is the reason why so many layer twos exist, right? Immutable X um, and then uh, OMG, you know, you could even argue Phantom, Polygon, uh, Harmony. I mean, there's a lot of layer twos out there, right? This is the reason why it serves this purpose. So will this happen before the end of the year? Maybe, maybe a lot of these layer, a lot of these NFT projects rather or DeFi projects rather than go to just one layer two, they're just being cross chain, right? But will OpenSea, for example, you know, move, be cross-chain or go, go into a layer two maybe or, or all these other ones? Um, or you could just use Alternative, like I mentioned, and it's a good time to bring up energy and energy swap for those of you guys that are tired of fees, tired of Uniswap fees, 100 bucks, 150 bucks to make a trade. Hey, you know what? You could go on energy swap and trade, yeah, all these tokens, hundreds to thousands of tokens, for almost no cost at all. So you could do that. There are alternatives like energy swap that's available. Also, speaking of NFTs, a couple big things I want to mention. Today is uh is Star Trek Day. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it is Star Trek Day. <laughs> so I have to mention uh VVA and Comey is launching the next generation, which is one of the best series ever in history of mankind. Series one. It, uh, it drops today, and I've seen people, you know, talk about it. But usually when these drop, they're, like, sold out immediately. But anyways, thought I'd mention, because VV does have the licensing rights, or I should say, Ecomi has licensing rights to Star Trek also. So anything that deals with Star Trek, NFTs, they own it. This is why I like Ecomi, because they own all the licensing rights. And for those of you guys that, you know, are wondering why Algorand is going up, Right? Why they pumped up something 30, 70 percent? It's because of NFTs. NFTs don't discount NFTs. Even if you don't like NFTs, they the marketplaces and the appetite for it is definitely having an effect on the price of the tokens. That's for sure. So Algorand did launch their NFT marketplace a few days ago, and ever since they launched, they have been skyrocketing, just like Avalanche, just like everyone else that have launched the NFT marketplace recently have really had effect on the price. And this is the reason why Algorand is going up. People are just liking NFTs. That's really it. FTX, when they launched their NFT marketplace not too long ago, FT FTT token also gone up to the moon. So yes, yes, NFTs definitely have that pump effect right now. And speaking about NFTs, lastly, I got to mention about Vimworld on top of VeChain. Because they have done really, really well. If you guys have been paying attention to VToken, they actually have been going up, even with yesterday's dip. And they do have a launch, you know, part of the reason why, because they have this contest on KuCoin, which is an exchange that I really like. You can participate and win up to $30,000 um, in Veed. 
And also, they recently launched their leaderboard. And Vims themselves, just like all these other NFTs, are getting very, very hot. The floor price keeps going up on them. So uh, Vim World is another, you know, gaming NFT kind of project that you definitely want to pay attention to, especially if you are a supporter of VeChain. All right. Now, now let's get to the, I guess, the main topic, bargain hunting. Bargain hunting. There's a lot of altcoins. Besides a few exceptions, I mean, Solana is starting to come back up in a big way. I've talked about Veed. They're actually up. Algorand is actually up. There's actually a lot of projects. Harmony yesterday started pumping, right? Um, the team behind the DeFi Kingdoms reached out to me. I have not looked at it fully, but it is also a gaming NFT market, you know, game gaming NFT DeFi project. I interesting. That may be having effect on them as well. But there are a lot of projects that are still doing very, very well. But there are some that have, you know, declined with a Bitcoin dip or dip themselves, right? So I thought it'd be good. Let's let's sort it. I already have this. Um, I actually, I thought I did. So I'm going to sort by rank at most the top 100 right now. You know what? Just for a hell of it, let's do 150. And then looking at a seven day, and I'm going to sort it not by growth, but by decline. Okay. So this, I think, is a good indication of, yes, there's been some weakness, right? And then we could see if they're undervalued. Well, I'm going to go through this list. Hold on. All right. I said a lot there. Uh, let me scroll up, make sure I didn't miss any super chats. I never hear you talking about Elrond. Panama is passing a bill making Elrond be using ETH as legal tender. I have a hard time believing that Panama is considering Elrond as legal tender along with BDC and ETH. I have a really hard time believing that, but that may be the case. So good for them if that's true. Um, what else is there? Uh, Joel says Miami coin staking 430. Okay. Uh, follow up yesterday. Amflex is supporting Lightning Network. Check their Twitter page. Someone did say that yesterday. So someone sent me that. So yes, Amp and Flexa is involved with Shivo, the app that is now operational in El Salvador. So yes. All right. Uh, Marius is asking about EOS. I'm not a fan of EOS at all. Zero. Zero interest in EOS. They have not fixed anything since 2017. Um, all right, so going down the list, what is under, I mean, what what's in the red, okay? This is going from uh, number one, Bitcoin, all the way to, to the 150th project. So Cello, Cello is down 30% for the last seven days. Cello is a payment payment uh, project. Recently, they, they, they pumped up a little bit. You can see this, this incline right here, right? And that's because a whole lot of DeFi projects joined together to start some kind of like initiative to, um, to better enhance the DeFi ecosystem, I guess, right? I forgot what they call it. It's a foundation or something, but they're building that on top of Celo. So it definitely pumped them up. But afterwards, they started coming down. So you look at the last year performance of Celo, just not that much. This is a project that just doesn't have a lot of interest right now. So even though they're down 30%, oh, my internet went down. My internet is having issues. Bear with me here. Bear with me. Let's see if it could fix itself. Okay. I think we're back. I think we're back. Just uh, F2, F2 pool is trying to hack me again. I think we're back. Maybe not. My internet should be okay, but it's having intermittent problems right now. Hold on one second, guys. Um, I 
I don't know. I can continue, but I know it's lagging right now. Uh, let me put on why. Let me put on a hot spot and see if I can uh, fix my issue here. Hold on one second. <laughs> maybe it's not the F2 pool. It, maybe it's the IMF hacking me. I don't know. Maybe. Hold on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it and maybe fix this. All right, I think I'm back. Well, I think my connection is good again. Okay. I'm just going to pretend like it's good, so we're going to continue on. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, Gary. Gary and SEC or IMF, I don't know. Maybe they're not liking what I'm saying, but oh well. Uh, oh well, Let the show continues. All right, so like I was saying about Cello, I'm not sure. I'm not really, I'm not sure if they're the type of project that's going to continue pumping. It seems like they had that one pump that gave them the huge bump, and then afterwards, they're just coming right back to the previous levels, right? So I'm going to continue down. Um, Voyager. Voyager, I think, is very, very, oops, no, now it's down again. All right, let's see, I'm back. Okay, I think I'm back. wrong I don't know what's going on I'm on my hot spot I'm still having problems all right maybe we're getting better no 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 Okay, is this better? Nah, no. Yeah, it's not working. Something's something's going on here. Okay, am I a little better? No. Maybe, maybe I am, no. I think I stabilized. I, I, I think so. I'm watching my, uh, my, my, my stream rate and it has stabilized around five. 
I think I could be, I think I'm good. Yes, I'm good. I'm good again. Wait, no, it's not good again. Uh, all right, guys, I may have to call it. I, I don't want to keep going back and forth. I don't want you guys to keep waiting. Um, let's see. I don't know. I guess uh, this, uh, it looks like it's okay. It might be okay. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to continue. Maybe it is Terry or IMF or someone. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to continue. All right, so I was saying, uh, going starting with Voyager, I think Voyager is very undervalued right now. You can see that ever since their token swap, um, man, they have been hammered down 23%, 30 days down, right? Uh, I heard that they're moving to a new... Uh, Canadian exchange for their ticker. So I think Voyager is really undervalued right now. I think that they could be a good buy. Uniswap also down for the last 30 days. This is, of course, due to the SEC FUD. You know, so obviously um, that's having an effect on the price. I think they're also very undervalued right now. Bargain, right? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is still streaming well. I'm still watching my bitrate go up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm not quite sure what's going on uh, with my internet connection right now. This is unusual, very unusual. Um, seems like I, I'm being hacked. <laughs> um, all right, what else is there? Uh, you know, going down the list, I'm going to just go, go real quick, real quick. I think Sandbox as an NFT decentralized world is undervalued. Um, going down, I think Tizo is okay. I think Ave, you know, Telcoin, Engine, especially Engine. I think Engine should be doing a lot better than than what it's doing right now. Um, let's see, like Ergo, Ergo, I should say, down seventeen percent. I think uh, they are one of the premier projects for Cardano, right? I think they. Uh, will be doing pretty well in the future. So down 70% for the week. I think they're pretty undervalued right now. They're a bargain. You know, going down the list. What else is there? Like Dent. You know, Dent. Yes, down 16%. Down 9% for last day. Mobile. Decentralized mobile. Um, they have not really recovered much from their recent drop from a few months ago. So I do think that, yes, uh, they could be a they are a bargain. And then these two, these two right here, back and back, Cardano and Cosmos, both down about 4 or 6% last 24 hours, but down 15% for the last seven days. These are premier, you know, protocols, ones I really like and support. They have been oversold. They definitely have oversold. Cardano with the recent FUD. Cosmos just, it's always been underperforming, right? But I do think these two are definitely bargains to be picking up right now. I think they're going to do really good in the future. Hey, looks like my internet connection got better. Let's hope this holds. Um, what else is there? Um, let's go down the list. I think Ultra, Orion, they're both in NFTs. Not Haven't really picked up recently. So they're kind of just, okay, Avalanche, I do think. They had a good pump recently coming down slightly. Once they find that floor, I think they could continue for, further. They have some big stuff going on. You know, going down the list, what else is down? Like Audius and Compound. I think, think these down 14% for the last seven days. These are bargains. I think both of these projects do well. One is the centralized streaming. One is in the DeFi play. Um, you know, Helium down 13%. They have been on fire for the last few months. So, like, something I need right now, okay? <laughs> Uh, basically a, a mesh internet network. Um, so that's what they're all about. If you get miners, you help power that. So yes, uh, V chain down 13%, 12%, definitely a bargain. Pancake swap, a bargain. You have a layer two like scale. You know, I mentioned about layer twos. There's a lot of them right now. But like KuCoin token with their new chain and all the things that they're doing, all the new coins they're adding. They're becoming really, really popular. The volume is exploding. So I think they're a bargain right now, too. Um, and then scrolling up, 
what else is there? You know, people talk about uh, Elron here down about 11%. They, they have started picking up a little bit recently. But again, I don't know how they're going to differentiate themselves from all the others. Someone mentioned they're going to become legal tender in Panama. Or, uh, I, I have not heard that. If that's true, that will separate them. But they're also a sharding EVM compatible chain. Um, let's see, like uh, Decentraland, Kuzama, you know, Arweave. These are definitely, especially Arweave, being the decentralized storage of Solana, down 10%, definitely a bargain at this point. You know, Decentraland, kind of like Sandbox, but bigger. Guzama, sister chain, uh, Polkadot down 10%. These are all fantastic protocols. They're fantastic protocols. So when they're down and you can buy them cheap, you can buy the dip, definitely a good time to take advantage. Uh, Neo still waiting for their, you know, N3, the graph and BAT, even though BAT is really stagnant. They really don't move much. They always stay around the same place um, for whatever reason. But... I still do like them. The Brave browser is fantastic. The graph helps project come create APIs. Chili's um, creates uh, token, you know, tokens for for sports clubs, right? These are all down ten. Uh, Dag, another very promising chain that has a U.S. Air Force as a client. Polygon, a layer two, and their own chain that has a robust ecosystem. These right here, Bat, Graph, Chili's, Constellation, and Matic. I think they're all good buy down 10 percent for the last seven days you go down the list you have something like uh zillica you know digibyte i think anchor polka dot i think they're okay projects although they're not really down for the week only slightly you know seven six percent right but they're good projects chain linking down six percent access infinity uh these are good Chainlink is a blue chip. You should just hold on to it. Axe Infinity, of course, the gaming project, right? Uh, Lewis says, BitBoy just gave me a shout out. Great. Shout out to BitBoy, too. I like Ben and I like what he's doing. He's definitely bringing a lot of awareness to the community. Um, so, shout out to Ben. And um, yeah, of course, Bitcoin being down 4%. Uh, that's also a bargain. Okay, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, looks like my internet finally stabilized. Looks like someone did not want me to list out bargains. Either it's F2Pool or IMF or Gary of the SEC. I don't know who, but <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hopefully we got through it. Hopefully you guys uh, got something out of it. But there is a lot. You know, with the Bitcoin dip, with any kind of dip, you know, what should you do? Well, number one, you never want to panic sell, right? If anything, you want to panic buy. These days, like today, it seems like exchanges are back online. Yesterday, there was a lot of crashes, right? But this is another reason why we should support decentralized exchanges. But, you know, overall, overall, you know, you got to take advantage of dips when you can, right? I honestly believe the the, the rally is going to continue. The bull run is going to continue. There's just so much more that's coming, Right? So stick with this, stay strong, take advantage when you can, and we'll all make some life-changing wealth together. Um, someone says they missed, i uh, sorry, while I was trying to fix my internet, a lot of super chats were missed. Uh, I don't know what Rare is, never heard of it. Buying Amp and Harmony. Amp has been stagnant for a very long time. So yes, I think a good move. Um, internet is moving with the market. Uh, reserve rights now. Phantom, yes. Stacks, I'm just neutral on. Um, uh, I missed. Someone said they gave me a. I missed a ten dollars super chat. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. Yumera GT4 Lotus revealed this morning. Okay. Good. You and your Yumeira. I'm not a fan of Lotus or Yumeiras or just Lotuses in general. Um, when do you think we'll be at all-time high for BDC? Towards the end of the year. Towards the end of the year. Probably December. Just like last time. Just like last time. Uh, yeah, someone says Shiba was pumping today. Yes, but I would not advise getting to Shiba. 
Uh, what do you think about Alluvium? I do like them. They have actually hauled really well. They pumped up a lot. Obviously, a partner of mine, but they're into gaming NFT too. They want to take down Axie Infinity. They pushed back their game, I believe, uh, towards the first quarter of 2022, or you know, it may be early in the, in December. But a lot of a lot of people has been looking at them. Um, their artists, you know, their gameplay, you know, looks. To be really really good and you could catch alluvios which is these cre creatures and and when you do you get nfts right and you can power them up so it's like a combination like like many things many gaming aspects so i think they're gonna do very well harmony's recovery is fantastic again you know harmony's rise or recovery i should say could be due to nfts which of course is coming aboard harmony and starting to do really well so that could be it that could be it all right i'm gonna let you guys go because my internet is still having issues so i'm gonna let you guys go i apologize i have good internet but sometimes it just goes down i don't know what whatever reason so so thanks for tuning in as always smash the likes subscribe to the channel tonight i'll have another stream 8 30 p.m central standard time that's when i'll do dca into my portfolio and today is a really good day for dca